Okay, so <laughs> after that brief interruption, here we are. Uh, this one? No, this one. Oh, there's nothing in it. Okay. <laughs> I should have known. Okay, so then here we are in section 11.1 .1, vectors in the plane. Okay, so then, the first thing we're going to talk about is line segments. So a line segment is literally just a piece of line. But what's important about it is that it is not oriented. So this is some point A and B, right? So all this is, is you can imagine that there's some piece of line, right, that's just some piece of line and the line continues like this, like so. Okay, now, the line segment is denoted either one of these ways, AB with a hat over it, and it's also equal to BA with a hat over it. So what this is telling you is that it doesn't matter which, in, for a line segment, it doesn't matter which one's coming first, right? You have no notion of order. Okay, so then this is called a line segment, but more mm, descriptively it's called an undirected line segment. So if there's an undirected line segment, then there's probably also a directed line segment. Okay, so then... <coughs> Now we have a directed line segment. Okay, and that is where you have still two points, A and B. But now <coughs> you sort of are indicating that you're going from A to B. Okay, and this is denoted like so, A, B, and almost with a hat like, the, like a line segment, but a different kind of hat. What kind of hat? An arrow, right? Arrow hat. So you can draw a hat like this, or if you like different kinds of hats, you know, everybody likes different kinds of hats. This is a fine hat, too, whatever you like. Okay, but this, this is not the same, not the same as this. Right? Not the same. Okay, so then that is another directed line segment, but this one is not from A to B. This one is from B to A. Okay, this is from B to A. Okay, so any questions about these things? <coughs> okay, <coughs> so now, if I take this, if I take this, and this is where things start to get fun now. So I can take this, and now, I, what? Move it. I can make a copy, right? Here, here. Now I have another one. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, nope, not like that. <coughs> now I can move it. So now, are these two things on top of each other? Right? They're not on top of each other. So they're not. They're not necessarily equal. So if I if I take these two now, <coughs> if I take these two and I erase this one and I call this P some other point, and I call this Q, right? So I have two different points, or four different points, A, B, P, and Q. But you saw me, right? I copied and pasted this. These are, in a sense, equivalent, right? So these, these two are equivalent. Okay, they're equivalent. Okay, they don't start and end at the same points, but... There's something about them, there are some things about them that are the same. So what is the same about these? Magnitude, okay, that's a pretty fancy word. Is there any less fancy word to describe that? Length, right? Length, magnitude, those are fine, either one. Right, so then the length is if you were to get out a ruler, okay, and, and measure it, right, we have some standard ruler where you say, ah, okay, this is... This is standard. These two lengths, these are the same. Same length. Okay, but now, now, if I uh, make some more points, so how about 
How about now? What I'm attempting to do is I'm attempting to draw a directed line segment that has the same length, okay, but it's going to be only within the ability of my hand, okay. So then here's this, okay. It's supposed to have the same length. So here's even some more points. So I'll call this C and this D. <coughs> Okay, so this will be C to D. Now, these two, these two have the same length. Okay, they're directed line segments. They're not the same directed line segment. Okay, but are they equivalent? Are they equivalent? Okay, the answer is no, they are not equivalent. Right, not equivalent. They're not equivalent because even though they have the same length, there's something else about them that's not the same. And what is that? The direction, right? They're not equivalent because they don't have the same direction. So why are these two directed line segments equivalent? The length and the direction are the same. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so then same direction. Direction, same direction. All right, this one has a different direction. Okay, so directed line segments are equivalent to each other. Basically, you can think of it like this. If you can perform a copy-paste operation with them and put them on top of each other, right? If you can rigidly, rigidly translate without rotation one onto the other, then two directed line segments are equivalent. Okay, so any question about that? <coughs> okay, so now let's briefly talk about mm, some coordinates. Okay, so understand that all of the previous discussion, right, was a coordinate-free discussion, meaning I'm not talking about if these do exist in 2D, 3D, 100D, infinite dimensions, whatever, right? So, but now if we have some particular coordinates, Coordinates. Man, it's hard to write with this thing. So, for example, <coughs> if I have a point A is, how about, uh, 1, 2, and another point B, B is uh, <coughs> something else, 3, 5, then let's draw approximately w what this is supposed to look like. Okay, so if this, this should be mostly review of, what, of things you've seen before. So, <coughs> I'll say that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then, where is A supposed to land? Can you see it with your eyes? And this is not a deep question. I'm not asking a deep question. Okay, so then right here at one, oh, no, nope, not that one. <coughs> this one. So one, two, there. So that's A. Okay, so where is, <laughs> look, it's like Christmas. Where's three, five? Okay, so two, three, five. Okay, so B. <coughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, so then now, this thing that I've drawn right here, is it a line segment or is it a directed line segment so far? It's a line segment. So then what is, what is missing about this to make it a directed line segment? <coughs> right, a direction, right? So then I haven't specified, is it from A to B or from B to A? Okay, so then now I'll make a specification. Okay, so then now is this a directed line segment? Yes. Okay, is it from A to B or from B to A? <coughs> A to B. So then, of these two possibilities, which one is it? Notationally. The first one, right? This one. Not that one. <coughs> Okay, so then now, now, 
AB, like this, we're going to introduce a little bit of arithmetic just by example, right? This is going to be something minus something. So what minus what? B minus A, right? So B minus A. Right, so the reason, other ways to say this, is that this, as an arrow, as a directed line segment, this is called the head of the arrow, right, the arrow head. Okay, and then by analogy, what is this one called? Tail. Foot would be okay also, right? So then it's, <coughs> or whatever you like, you know. I think that's somewhat of a cultural thing. What's the opposite of head, tail, maybe foot? I don't know. Right, header, footer, heads and tails on a coin. I don't know. <coughs> so, head minus tail. Okay, so now let's just see if we can sort of fumble our way without real strong definition about what this probably means. So we said that B was 3, 5. 3, 5. And we said that A was 1, 2. Okay, so what do you think <coughs> the proper thing to do here is, as far as the arithmetic is concerned? Ah, you subtract the x's and you subtract the y's. Okay, so then now I'm going to write down something that is wrong. A little bit wrong. <coughs> okay, so I subtracted the x's and I subtracted the y's. Okay, and now if you do that, then you get 2, 3. Now, in a sense, this is not, not really so excellent. Okay, this is not excellent for one very strong reason, and that is this, this right here, if I call this AB, if I was to do that, then that's sort of weird because this is the notation right up here. This is the notation that we were using for points. Right, so A is parenthesis 1, 2, and B is parenthesis 3, 5. Okay, so now I have this AB. Now, is a point the same as a directed line segment? Oh, no. Oh, no, they're not the same. They're not the same, but as I have it written, they're written the same. Okay, they're written the same. So then, now, when you're going to write directed line segments, you don't use round parentheses like so. Okay, this is not the proper notation. The proper notation is... that AB is written with angle brackets, 2, 3. So those of you with, because there's always some one or two that I, I don't understand, but those of you with advanced mathematical background, you'll know that those angle brackets are used for a variety of other things, okay? But we are going to use them to denote directed line segments in this class, and that's that. Okay, and if you think if you know of something else, then you're just going to have to suppress that. <coughs> okay, so any question about this notation? So the purpose of this notation is so that you don't confuse the di you don't miss the distinction between a point and a directed line segment. Okay, that being said, what wh I'm going to start saying some things that will tell you that actually there's not really a difference between a point and a directed line segment at all. Okay, it's just a matter of use. So it's just like a hammer, right? A hammer, a hammer can be used to build a house. It can also be used to go on a murderous rampage. So then, <coughs> right, is it a weapon or is it a tool to build a house, right? It depends on the use, right? So then, is a, is a point, does it behave like a directed line segment? Uh, well, it depends on its use. Okay, so then now, this thing here, we're going to talk about is sort of the standard. I'm going to write this in quotes here. Directed line segment. So in a sense, we could say something like this. Okay, this... If you have a directed line segment, <coughs> right, that looks like this, Okay. Then if I grab it and I move it around, no matter where I move it, it's always the same directed line segment. So in a sense, in a sense, 
right? The actual points where it begins and ends are sort of irrelevant as far as equivalency is concerned. So then, so then what we do is we say, okay, okay, I will draw an axis. I'll draw an axis. And now I'm going to take this directed line segment and I'm going to put it in standard position. Where do you think the standard position is for a directed line segment? <coughs> Where the tail is at the origin. Right? So then this, now, blah. This is great. <laughs> this is the first time I've done this. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. <coughs> so then now this, this, is moved to standard position. Okay, so then when you have a directed line segment in standard position, what that means is that if you, if you have a directed line segment in standard position, then there is only one thing necessary to describe that directed line segment, and that is what? The position of the head. Right? Because you already know if the directed line segment is in standard position that the tail is where? At the origin. So then, if you have a directed line segment in standard position, then it is enough to describe it entirely to describe where its head is. Right? This is the head. So if this is at some point A, then one point. One point. A is enough to describe a directed line segment <coughs> in standard position. Okay, so then now, for a variety of historical reasons and uh, just reasons that humans, mathematicians included in in that category are lazy, so then we don't actually call a directed line segment in standard position a directed line st segment in standard position. What is the actual name for such a thing? Starts with a V. Vector. Okay, good. <coughs> good. So then, a directed line segment in standard position. Okay, that is to say <coughs> that this is, I will just introduce the concept by giving you a prototypical example. Okay, so then <coughs> here is a particular vector. switches my colors. I got to pay attention to that. So, if this happens to be at the point at the point AB and we're going to call this vector what is what is a usual name for a vector anyhow? There's one there's one name for vector like a mathematical name like you use x in calculus 24:17. What do you always use for vector in in 24:19? You can guess. V, right? Why? Because because vector starts with V, right? Excellent. So then, you can call this vector V. It is standard to write that V is equal to the same notation as a directed line segment, like so. Okay, so any question about this picture or the notation or the relationship between the words line segment, directed line segment, standard position, directed line segment, and standard position, and vector? <coughs> okay, so mostly and almost entirely now I'm going to stop saying line segment, directed line segment, and I'm just going to call it a vector. Okay, because understand, this, is, this right here is the point AB. And there is a directed line segment in standard position that is a vector pointing at AB. So whether or not I treat AB as a vector or as a point is in a lot of senses academic because it's like the hammer thing, right? You use it to build houses. You use it to kill people. It all depends on the use. Okay, so any questions about this? <coughs> okay, so now we can talk about just some brief computations. <coughs> Okay, 
Okay, this is a remark about length, which is also called magnitude. Magnitude. Okay, so then if you have a vector or a directed line segment, whatever you like, that's equal to this, AB, in coordinates, <coughs> then the notation for length is this, two bars, and then the vector. <coughs> so it looks kind of like absolute value, but it's not absolute value. It is two bars on either side. So that being said, if you take a physics class at UTD and most other state schools in the United States, then they're probably going to write just absolute value bars. But they're wrong, just like physicists are usually wrong. No, no, no. I have a lot of good physicist friends, and they're quite clever. But in this class, <coughs> in this class, we write double bars, okay, to mean the length. Okay, so then <coughs> the formula, so given coordinates, coordinates, the length of V or the magnitude of V, whatever you like to call it, is, who knows? The square root of a squared plus b squared, right? Great. So let's just briefly just look at that, why that would be the case. So now, if I make the assumption that a and b are both positive, right, or, you know, I just take the coordinate system and rotate it until everything, that, until the vector's <coughs> head lies in the first quadrant in the upper right. What am I looking for? This right here. So if I draw a vector here, and it is pointing at a b right that is to say this is v is equal to a b then now i can take i can take <coughs> this and say well what is the length of this what's that length right there it's b right it's b and then now I can take the other side and say, okay, what is this length? A. Okay, now by design, by design, this is a right triangle. And can you find the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle? I hope so, right? That's one of the requirements to get in here. So the length is the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs, right? So the length is, <coughs> so if I... If I write length like this, then the length is the square root <coughs> of the sum of the squares. So just as the minimal, minimalist possible example, how about I give you that V is equal to this fantastic thing, negative 3, comma, 4. Please compute for me the length of V. Okay, but, but do it by hand. I know that many of you can do this just <coughs> without much consideration, but just do it for me. <coughs> okay, so then, <coughs> it should be, now I'm going to make a standard mistake here. This will be the square root of negative 9 plus 16, right? So then that's what, the square root of 7? Is that right? No, that's not right. But nevertheless, okay, this is calculus two, and I guarantee I'm going to see this next week. I guarantee it. Okay, arithmetic and other algebraic things just for some reason kill you even at this level. No, right? So then what happened here? You have to square negative three. Negative three multiplied by negative three is positive nine. Right, so then the answer is the square root of 25, which is just a fancy way to write 5. Okay, so what is the length of this vector? 5, right? So what that means, what that means is that if you were to draw this vector and you didn't have a coordinate system and you didn't know it was pointing at negative 3, 4, then you could draw it on the page and then you could take out a ruler and you have some standard ruler and you put it on there and you say, ah, I measure it, it has length 5. Okay, so not all... <coughs> vectors have the same length, right? You give me any length, 
right? any, any number, your favorite number that is positive, uh, non-negative, and I can make a vector that has that length. Right? You want a vector of length 7? I can do it. A vector of length 42.8? I can do it. No problem. Okay, so then not all vectors have the same length. <coughs> but a standard kind of question is something like this. So, for example, this is a remark. Okay, this is called a unit vector. So there are two remarks. One, given v, a vector, if the length of v is equal to some very special number, what special number? If the length of v is equal to what? One, then v is said to be a unit vector. Okay, and the second part of this remark is this. Again, given v, given a vector, <coughs> then, well, I'll say this. If, so this will be a three-part remark. If the length of v is equal to some other special number, so besides one, what's another number that always shows up a lot in math classes? zero. So if the length of v is zero, then in any coordinate system whatsoever, you, if, if this is uh, on the plane, then you could tell me both coordinates. Right? What, are the only, what are the only possibilities for the first and second coordinate? Zero and zero. It right? couldn't be anything else. Because if there was something else, even if it, was, if it was positive, you'd square it and it would be positive. If it was negative, you would square it, it would be positive. Okay, so then if you have a vector of length 0, then it is necessarily equal to 0, 0, 0 in all coordinates, however many coordinates there happen to be. Okay, the third remark is given a vector that doesn't have length 0. So in particular, what does that mean about the coordinates? Right. How many of them aren't 0? At least 1. Right. So then, if the vector has length 0, then all coordinates are 0. And if all coordinates are 0, then it necessarily has length 0. So if, if I give you a vector that has length which isn't 0, then necessarily there is at least one coordinate which is not 0. Okay, so <coughs> given a vector that doesn't have length 0, a vector, a unit vector, in the direction of V is the following. So then I'm going to take V and let's imagine for a minute that V has length uh, 5, like the last V that we had. V has length 5. So if V has length 5, is it a unit vector? No, right? It's a unit vector because it is too, too long. It's not a unit vector because it's too long. So then, you know, sort of intuitively from a human language point of view, if we want to find a unit vector that is in the direction of V, then I want to take V and shrink it, right? Make it a little shorter. Okay. <coughs> Similarly, what if, what if I, ha I gave you a vector that had length one half? Then is it a unit vector? No, because it's too too short, right? So then if I want to make a unit vector which is in the direction of that vector, then I need to take that vector and I need to make it longer, right? So, so we're, we're getting into this notion where we're going to take a vector and make it uh, longer or shorter. Generally, generally the verb to describe this is scaling, right? We're going to scale vectors, okay? So then to find a unit vector in the direction of a given vector, and that vector is not the zero vector, you take that vector and then you divide by the length of that vector. Okay, so this bears giving an example. So for example, <coughs> 
So if I give you, again, how about that same vector? V is negative 3, 4. And from previous work, we know that the length of this vector was what? 5. Okay, so is it a unit vector? No. If it was a unit vector, it would have to have length 1. Okay, so then let's find unit vector in the direction of V. Okay, so that will be V over the length of V. And so now we're introducing this sort of just by example, not very formally, but just by example. So the negative 3 over 4, and then divided by 5. So what do you think I'm supposed to do with that division by 5? So for one thing, if you like to write it another way, I could say instead of dividing by 5, I could multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by 1 fifth, multiplied by negative 3, 4. So now <coughs> the over 5 or the multiply by 1 over 5, it's outside of the, the angle brackets. Okay? I want it to be inside. So what do you think is the proper thing to do to take it inside? Okay, so how? So should I do it like this? So is it negative 3 over 5? I'll just do it to the first one there. Like that? No. Oh, okay, I should have done it to the second one, because you always do it to the last one. Right, and not the first one? No, 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 no. You do it to all of them. Okay, good. So now 4 over 5. So now some of you may be incredulous to think that, well, if I call this vector u, just to give it a name, then my claim, my claim to you is that this is a unit vector, which means it necessarily has to have length what? 1. Okay, but I just wrote down some vector, and I'm not really convinced it has length 1. How can we check that? Right, we just compute the length of it. Let's check. The length of u, well, that should be the square root of 9 over 25 plus 16 over 25. So then that is the square root of 25 over 25. And what is that? The square root of 1, <laughs> which is 1. Okay, fantastic. So we did it, right? We computed a unit vector in the direction of v. Okay, now let me ask you a follow-up question. Find a unit vector... in the opposite direction of V. So what do you think? Right, you multiply by negative 1. So then, negative V over length V, <coughs> which will be negative. We just computed it on the previous previous part, negative 3 over 5, 4 over 5. Okay, now how does this negative outside of the angle brackets distribute inside? To both, right? To all coordinates. Okay, so then it is now 3, 5, <coughs> negative 4, 5. Okay, so any questions about these things? Okay, <coughs> so how are we doing on time? Good. <coughs> okay, so any questions before we continue? Okay, so we introduced the concept by example, so now let's be a little bit more precise. <coughs> Oop, down here. Okay, this is scaling. Okay, <coughs> so now given, given a vector, and what do you think I mean by this? Right, a vector which is not zero, right? So then if, it, if the vector I give you is zero, then there's essentially nothing to say. So let's say that I gave you a vector and it ha doesn't have length zero. So given a vector which is not the zero vector and some constant c, <coughs> we have the following. So if I...
if I take a axis here and draw a vector. <coughs> yes, this is the zero vector. Right, so in, notice I would like to point out that this would not be correct. Oops. <coughs> this would not be a correct way to write it. V not equal to this. Why, why, is that, why is that not correct? Because the thing on the left, right, V is what kind of object? A vector. And this thing on the right is what kind of object? A scalar, right? These are not the same, right? They're not the same kind of thing, so they cannot be on opposite sides of equalities and inequalities. Okay? If you do, that signals to me and the graders that you have vastly misunderstood the context. Okay? This would be wrong. Okay? <coughs> So if this is V, if this is V, then this, oops, gotta choose the thingy. Now I'm, I'm drawing it under, I'm gonna draw a vector under it, okay, but that's only because if I draw it over it, then they'll dis one will disappear, okay? <laughs> okay, I tried. Now I'll try again. Ah. Okay, so they're on top of each other. Okay, now this, this longer vector, I can obtain this longer vector by multiplication by a value of C. So just eyeballing this, just looking at it with your eyes, if the red vector is obtained by the blue vector by multiplication by a scalar, what do you think, what do you think is the approximate value of this particular scalar, of this particular example that I've drawn? Two, right? Right, this is this vector, and why, what makes you say that it's, it's about two? It's twice as long, right? So it's like I took the blue vector, and I didn't rotate it at all. I didn't rotate it. But what I did is I said, okay, I'm going to make it twice as long. So then this, this, <coughs> this is CV where C is some value greater than 1. And just for your eyes, you know, this looks like, like C is 2. <coughs> okay, so that's what happens if you multiply by uh, <coughs> a positive constant which is greater than 1. Okay, so now what if, what if <coughs> I do a similar thing? <coughs> hard to, to do this. Okay. <laughs> so now, instead of doing that, <coughs> if I erase this thing, it's like surgery here. Okay. <coughs> so then now, here's a littler vector. So again, this is obtained, this is obtained by taking the blue vector and multiplying it by a constant. So the previous example was where the constant looks approximately like 2. What do you think this example is? This is like a half, right? This is like a half. <coughs> this is C. 0 is less than C is less than 1. And just for your intuition, this looks like... looks like... C is one half. <coughs> okay, so any question about that example? Okay, now similarly, the last example. <coughs> I'll take this. Okay. Ah, look at all this. Like a savage here. Okay, well I'll just erase all of it. <coughs> Okay, so now if I... No, I don't want to do that. This is hard, isn't it? Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'll figure this out. And I'll be much smoother with it as the, as the semester goes on. <coughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw attempt to draw the same vector V, more or less. <coughs> Okay, 
but now I'm going to draw a new vector. I'm going to draw it like this. Okay, so here's another vector. Now this again can be achieved by multiplication by a scalar. Okay, so then multiplication by a scalar. So then this down here, this is CV. It's still CV. But what's true? What do you think this C is? It's a negative value. So what's happening here? How would you describe the pointiness of, of the red vector versus the blue vector? It's pointing in an opposite direction. Right? How would you, just, just with your eyes, right? we're not trying to be exact here, with your eyes, how would you describe the length of these two? The length of them. They're the same. They have the same length. They have the same length, but they are pointing in <coughs> opposite directions. So this is what it looks like when you scale a vector by something which is negative. Okay, so just for your intuition, this looks like looks like C is negative one. <coughs> okay, so any question about this example? Any question about these things? Okay, so then now, that's all I had planned for today. We'll meet again on Thursday. That first bit, yeah, probably, okay, so, but that's still the one cares about that anyway.